did you know that you can use something as simple as a plastic bottle to boil water, make a fish trap, rope, purify water, or even make a spoon? So make sure you stay tuned until the end of this video to find out how. Let's start with rope, or some might call it string, or even cordage. To do this, you'll need a knife, but something sharp like a piece of broken glass or a broken piece of flint will also work. Start by sticking your knife into a piece of wood. In this case, I'm using the remains of a dead pine tree. Then start by carefully twisting the bottle to begin the cutting process. Keep on pulling until you reach the base of the bottle. You'll end up with several meters of plastic rope that can be used for virtually anything that you'd normally use a piece of rope for, such as binding, carrying, or securing objects. You can even braid several lengths together to make a super strong rope that, believe it or not, can hold the weight of a person. For this next survival hack, you can use any bottle. In fact, you can use any similar plastic bottle for all of these hacks. So here I am using an empty one litre bottle of cooking oil. What's important to remember is the size of the entrance, and this will depend on the food source you are trying to trap. In this case, I'm going to aim to trap small fish and prawns. Larger bottles with a larger opening will allow you to trap larger fish, crabs and lobsters. Now let's get back to the script. Survival isn't always easy. It's about using what you have in whatever situation you find yourself in. Let's talk about food and how we can use an empty plastic bottle to catch our food. Depending on whether you are near a lake, river or on the coast, you can turn a plastic bottle into a very simple and extremely effective bottle trap. I've done this on numerous occasions and have caught fish, crayfish, crabs and prawns. To do this, you'll once again need some form of sharp tool to cut the top of the bottle off and then flipping it over and inserting it back into the bottle. This creates a funnel that will allow creatures to enter, but will be difficult for them to escape. Now you'll need to add some sort of weight, such as a small rock and then some bait, for example worms or bread. Now let's jump over to the coast and grab some natural bait, such as these limpets or snail type creatures called periwinkles. These are a mollusk that you quite often find attached to rocks. With the bait inserted into the bottle, it's now ready to leave for a few hours or even better overnight. And it's just a matter of time before the sea creatures will enter. This is my mate Care from the YouTube channel Care Bear Adventures. Here he is retrieving his trap the following morning. You can clearly see there are several prawns in the trap and these are actually pretty big prawns for the UK and are super tasty too. Having done this several times, I can highly recommend leaving the bottle trap out overnight and to improve your chances of catching something, try placing the trap amongst the seaweed as this is where the majority of the sea life likes to hide. Have you ever been camping and forgotten your eating spoon? Well, don't worry. This next tip will show you how to turn a plastic bottle into a spoon. The key here is to visualize exactly where the spoon is located within the empty bottle and then proceed to cut it out using a sharp tool. You can use any form of sharp tool like broken glass, a sharp rock, or even a knife. But for this demonstration, I'm going to speed things up a little by using a pair of scissors, the type of scissors you would normally find in a first aid survival kit. Once the spoon is cut out of the bottle, you can then reduce the sharpness of the plastic by heating it next to a flame. This will also improve the overall strength of the spoon, making it more rigid. Okay, now let's talk about something many people think is impossible, and that being boiling water in a plastic bottle. Yes, it really can be done, although I wouldn't recommend drinking the water as the chemicals released into the water due to the heat could be quite harmful. But for this demonstration, I think it's important to know exactly how to do this without melting the bottle. I guess in a survival situation, any water is better than no water. 
What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Firstly, you want to fill the bottle with water and then, here's the important part, you want to hang it into the flames of the fire. Try and avoid putting the bottle directly onto the coals as that's usually how the bottle melts and ends up extinguishing your fire. To simply suspend the bottle, you could use something that we previously made like rope, the plastic rope. Or what I think is a better option is a root from a tree as these won't stretch with the heat of the fire. Pine and cedar roots work great for this, but a good strong vine such as a clematis would also work. After a few minutes, you'll see micro bubbles forming within the bottle and then steam will appear and then eventually larger bubbles will appear indicating the boiling of water. I remember doing this a few years ago on a very cold night survival challenge where I turned the hot water into a hot water bottle which I then inserted into my sleeping bag. Again, I would just like to say that I would not recommend drinking this water unless you really were in a survival situation. We all need water to survive, but how do we purify dirty water? The answer is a filter, and that's exactly what we're about to make. To do this, you'll want to remove the base of the bottle using a sharp tool. Again, a knife or a piece of broken glass or a sharp broken stone will also work. Now make a few holes in the bottle so you can use a shoelace or a piece of string to suspend the bottle from a stick. Now fill the bottle with several layers of material which will act as a filter, filtering all the impurities from the water. The layers I'm using here are a piece of cloth, well this could be a piece of t-shirt or another cotton fabric, followed by a thick layer of sand and then some pebbles to trap the larger sediment. These layers will trap and filter sediment and any other particles which are usually suspended within the water, leaving you with a much purer water than the water you initially poured in. It's important to mention that the water, although filtered, can still contain harmful bacteria, which is why you should always boil filtered water for several minutes before drinking. With the bottle filled with a form of cotton fabric and a thick layer of sand, it's now time to suspend it from the stick before adding a final filtration layer of pebbles. I've used half of a second bottle to act as a cup and the other half as a scoop to scoop up the dirty puddle water. Just take a look at the colour of that water. It's dirty, it's brown, it's full of sediment. But wait until you see the colour of the filtered water at the end of this video. This simple but effective water filter really could save your life. If this video taught you something new, something you didn't already know, then please let me know by hitting the like button and please comment which method you found most interesting. And now for the end result. You can see in my left hand I have the dirty brown puddle water and in the right hand we have the filtered water all thanks to this simple water filter made from a plastic bottle. For more survival hacks, please check out my survival hacks playlist where you'll find tips and tricks for bushcraft and survival, wilderness cooking, useful tree identification techniques including non-toxic woods for bushcraft projects and cooking utensils, as well as shelter building, foraging for wild food, and one of my favourite subjects of all, fire lighting. If you have a survival hack video idea, then please let me know by commenting below. And if you haven't already, then please hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to let me know that you liked the video by hitting the like button. And for those of you that use Instagram, please give me a follow by searching at Bushcraft Tools and let me know that you're following by dropping a comment on my latest post. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.